Oh, thank God they didn't kill the dog in this one. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I guess. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hampker back with you, and today we are talking about John Wick Chapter 2. But first, let's start with a drink, and the drink I have for you that I'm excited about because of the name is the Continental. And as we all know, the Continental is that uh, hotel that the assassins can go to. It's a safe place, a safe haven to conduct their business, but not on, you know, hotel property. Anyway, the Continental is two measures of uh, rum. A dash of creme de mint, one measure of lime juice, and a dash of, uh, of powdered sugar. All into a shaker, shake it up, and pour into a cocktail glass. So, John Wick 2, or Chapter 2, is they got the same team back, so directed by Chad Stahelski and written by Derek Kolstad, and of course stars Keanu Reeves as John Wick, as the unstoppable assassin. Um, so I did one, two. So John Wick is back and it pretty much kicks off right where the last one started with John Wick coming down off of his high after killing close to 100 men and with his new dog and he's just trying to put his life back together. And then comes a knock at the door and it's a old, uh, uh, I guess colleague coming to call in a debt on John. And John, of course, doesn't want to do it. He said, look, I'm not that guy anymore. I'm retired. Even though just like yesterday, you killed like 100 guys with seemingly no problem. Um, just yesterday, you did, the point is he's trying to retire. Uh, where was I? All right, so I did the lime juice. So I'll do a bit of powdered sugar. And then just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of creme de mint. Shake this bastard up. Just like John Wick shook all those bastards up dead. Shook them, shook them dead. Took them, just shot them in the face. All right, let's see how this drink is. Creme de mint, it's a little scary. Okay, to the Continental, to John Wick Chapter 2. <laughs> Look, this movie is not trying to reinvent the wheel when it comes to action movie storylines, but what it does do well is, is, is frame action sequences brilliantly. I mean, these, these action sequences are, are violent, visceral, and most importantly, easy to follow. The second film in what I assume is going to be a franchise is just as much fun and just has just as many great action scenes as the first one did. So if you like the first one, you're gonna really like this one because the first one had a very simple storyline. This one also has a very simple storyline. Um, and, and it's just a whole lot of fun and just, uh, just a joy to watch. Now, both of these movies' action sequences are so well choreographed and shot that I'm hoping all other action movie directors kind of take their cue from this and movies like The Raid and The Raid 2. Um, and look, I'm talking to you, you know, uh, the, the Marvel, and I'm talking to DC, and I'm talking about, like, the Mission Impossible team, and I'm talking about any director who thinks they know how to shoot action, but then just turn in some chopped up, cut to shit mess that doesn't make any sense and you can't follow. This movie, you could follow what was going on, and you could tell that Keanu Reeves was doing most of his own stunts. I would say about 90%, and that's impressive. Now, obviously, I love the action sequences in this movie, but what I also really liked was this, this world that now this John Wick created world that these movies have built around this kind of assassin's guild that you know, uh, has has this center place of the Continental, and apparently the Continental exists on multiple uh, continents, which is a, a neat little addition, and they do add to this, and I really like that. But sometimes these additions create more questions than they answer. So this movie is, of course, not 
perfect. Uh, one of the problems I had with this is that at the very beginning of the movie where uh, John gets this task, he claims that it was impossible and then it, there's a short little kind of montage prep scene of his and then he goes to this impossible job and he seems to just walk right up to it and i just thought that was kind of strange it was like i thought you said it was impossible and it seems super easy uh another one of the problems i had with this movie is that uh john wick is now becoming this kind of superhero and look i get it i get he's supposed to be this unstoppable kind of legend myth kind of a thing um but in the first movie he he listened at least didn't seem like uh you know, he, he was impossible to hurt or, or it, it just, he, in this, he just seemed a little bit too, too unstoppable, if that makes sense. I mean, he was almost enhanced, like a Captain America kind of unstoppable, or we had like super serum in him or something. Um, here's your geek moment of the day. Ding! Another thing is that now the Continental has like a gadget shop where, and you kind of see this in the trailer, um, and John gets this device that just, it's just a little too much for this world. It just became not, a, a little too unbelievable. Look, don't get me wrong. I had a lot of fun with this movie as I did the first one. Well, of course, now that I have to now skip the first 15 minutes of the first one and thank God nothing happens to the dog in this movie. Oh my God, I couldn't handle it if it did. Um, so yeah, I, I had a lot of fun with this one just like the last one. And if you're a fan of good action movies that are done really, really well, like some of the best I've seen in years, um, go see this because it is definitely worth a watch. Anyway, I'm going to give this movie uh, four out of five drinks really good really good time go see it cheers everybody thanks so much for joining me let me know if you saw the first one and what you thought of it um cheers everybody have a drink on me